What's good? What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, one and only, Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, doing NFL and NBA updates for today. As you know, I do the sports in the morning, and I'll do react in the afternoon. You know, so this is March 24th, 2023. Uh, I'm going to go over uh, last night's NBA scores. There was only four games last night, so I've got to go over a ton. Um... Let me pull these ga- these scores up right here. Of course, my Charlotte Hornets played last night, and they didn't win. But I'm not so much mad because right now we're playing to try to get a high draft pick. You had uh, Magic versus the Knicks and Pablo Bancaro. Powers, Magic Pass, rudderless Knicks, as it says. Uh, you had 10 from R.J. Barrett, 23 from Julius Randle. 25 from Emmanuel Quickly and Quentin Grimes gave you 25. I mean, typically you should be winning a game when three of your starters score 23 or more. But you got 16 out of Franz Wagner. Paulo uh, Bancaro gave you 21. Six rebounds, four assists, two steals, two blocks. Uh, 16 from Wendell Carter Jr. with eight um, rebounds to go with that. And you got the the Dukies, the Duke Blue Devil connect going on with that. And you got 10 from Markel Foltz, uh, 18 from Cole Anthony, former Tar Hill, but my least favorite, and 11 from Maurice Wagner. I like Orlando's chances going forward, man. They're just young right now. They're just like young. They just need experience. I think uh, Fra- Franz Wagner, this is only like his second year. Yeah, he's only got one year experience under his belt. You got Paolo. Wendell Carter Jr. has only been in the league, I think, like, uh, I want to say four years, about four years. He's still young. Markel Fultz, still young. Co Anthony, still young. Markel Fultz, I mean, he's only five years in the league, and he had that. Um, I guess you say it was a, it's a Ben Sim, it was a Ben Simmons like issue, but Ben Simmons issue is going to be permanent. Cole Anthony, it's only his second year in the league, you know, and he and Cole Anthony coming off the bench. I mean, that's a that's a pretty good uh, bench player to be having. So we got uh, Cavs, um, Stud Nets. I think it was a comeback. I didn't watch the game. It would be the 116 or 114. You had 26 from Mobley, along with 16 rebounds and four blocks. That see, this is that's why they drafted Evan Mobley. Cause you know, this is only his second year in the league. I mean, three, four, five years in the league. There's there's no telling what he could be. Jared Allen gave you 12 and 10. 31 from Donovan Mitchell. Every time I see the box score, Donovan Mitchell's putting up a 30 piece wing dinner almost every single night. 13 points, eight assists from Garland, who's pretty much took a back seat because last year this was Garland's team. And Brooklyn Nets, Cameron Johnson only gave you five. I don't even know if I want to shout him out as a Tar Hill right now. You only gave it five points. Nick Class to give you 11. 32 for Mikhail Bridges. 25 for Spencer Dinwiddie. 12 for Royce O'Neal. Joe Harris. I don't know what Brooklyn's going to go do going forward. I just know that they better keep Bridges. Bridges put up 32. Last time I looked, he was averaging 19 a game. He's going to probably be it. He, he keeps it up. He could actually get 20 a game by the end of the season. Even with those games – those few games left. He's been putting up 20 points and 30 points ever since he's got to Brooklyn. And I, I've been saying it's the best thing that's happened in his career, probably. And Spencer Dinwiddie, he's probably going to constantly get bounced around. Bounced around. I mean, he's back at Brooklyn where he pretty much started. My Charlotte Hornets played New Orleans Pelicans. Did I expect us to win? No. And did I want us to win? No, because we need to get either the number one or the number two pick. If not, I don't I don't know what's going to go on in Charlotte. 
But uh, we need to get rid of Gordon Haywood, who only gave us 12 points. P.J. Washington gave us 18. And this is only his um, second year in the league. Or third, actually, this is three years' experience. So this is his fourth year. I mean, he's averaging 15 and four. He's getting more playing time. And Kentucky Cats, though, I have a lot of faith in Kentucky Cats, man. Kentucky Cats be balling out in the NBA. Um, we got eight from Kelly Oubre, five from Terry Rozier. I mean, we done nothing. We looked like a bunch of bums last night. Uh, Dennis Smith Jr. from Fayetteville. They might as well gave him a ton of minutes last night if we was going to get eight out of Kelly Oubre and five out of Terry Rozier. I mean, actually he did because Terry Rozier only played nine minutes. He probably got hurt. Dennis Smith Jr. played 21 minutes, eight points, four assists. And, you know, I I hope Dennis Smith Jr. can stay in the league as long as he can, man. I hope he can. He's from Fayetteville, North Carolina, my hometown. Born and raised um, from here I am. Otherwise known as Vietnam. And, you know, everybody should want local town um, heroes and celebrities and success stories. To work out. All right, Pelicans, we got 19 from Trey Murphy. Brandon Ingram gave you 30. Go figure. 20 from Jonas Valachunas, along with 19 rebounds. <laughs> wow. Um, and then you got 20 from CJ McCollum. They don't even got Zion right now. Like, if they could actually make the play in. Or even get in, like, because the seeds, are like, the between, like, the fifth seed and, like, the tenth seed, it's, like, a game and a half back. If they could actually even get into, like, the sixth seed and get a healthy Zion back, I, they'd be a scary team come playoff time because they were scary last year. They were they were scary last year. Uh, Oklahoma City played um, the Clippers. Clippers won 127 to 105. Leonard, two-way terror as Clippers navigate Thunder. Lou Dort gave you nothing. 16 from Jalen Williams. And that's the Jalen Williams that everybody say is going to be something. 18 from Josh Giddy and 30 from Shea Gillish Alexander, which go figure. I mean, he's putting up 30-piece wing dinners every single night, man. But – you know, Kawhi Leonard gave you 32, six assists, six rebounds, four steals on only two turnovers. And you got 24 from Russell Westbrook, along with seven assists. And then 16 from Bones Highland. <laughs> I just love his name, Bones Highland. Uh, Terrence Mann gave you 14 and 12 from Nicholas Batum. If they get Paul George, if Paul George could be healthy, could play off time, and they don't like that's the thing. They got Kawhi healthy. Eric Gordon started. He didn't give you much, but uh, on any other a given night, Eric Gordon can do what Russell Westbrook did 24 and 7 assists. And then they still got Terrence Mann, Bones Highland, Nicholas Batum, who looked like his career was done at Charlotte because he was playing like it. He sure as hell was playing like his career was done at Charlotte. Um, let me check the standings, see if anything's changed. Uh, Lakers up into the ninth, and New England, New Orleans Pelicans are in that 10th spot now. So, who knows? Who knows what could happen? They're 36 and 7. Lakers are 36 and 7. Um, Dallas is 36 and 7. I mean, there's like three teams 36 and 7 right there, and Minnesota 37 and 7. In Golden State, 38, 36, 38, 34 for Phoenix. I mean, it's like so close. It's so close. Um, Phoenix don't got Durant, so they got to hold the fort down. Clippers without um, Paul George got to make sure they hold the fort down. Golden State, they better hope they don't got a lot of road games because they could be on the outside looking in because they can't win on the road. And Milwaukee's holding that number one seed in the – the East Denver still number one, and and I think you know Giannis is definitely probably being overlooked for MVP because he ain't had Chris Middleton, Mo City, or Drew Holiday. 
his usage rate was extremely high. And and one thing I think that might be going against Embiid is Embiid is playing with a future Hall of Famer. He's not playing like a, a I mean, he's not playing like he used to play when he was with, at Houston or the first year he got at Brooklyn, but James Harden is a future Hall of Famer. And Jokic doesn't have no future Hall of Famers on his team, not as yet as yet right now. And Chris Middleton could be a future Hall of Famer if he keeps it up, and Drew Holiday if he keeps if he keeps it up. You know. But Philly's still at number three, Boston at number two. The East is going to be – I mean, whoever comes out the East definitely going to earn it. The West is just, just like, you don't know, man. It's not really one team we can really – you could just really say in the West that is a sure bet. Denver, they're not really a sure bet. Phoenix, is, if Durant is healthy – I would say might be the only sure bet out of the West. But Durant's not healthy. Uh, Paul George ain't healthy at the Clippers. Not a sure bet. Kings, not sold on the Kings. Great year. I'm happy for them. Great year. Good year for the Kings. So happy for them. But let's be honest, man. They probably will get bounced out in the first round. If they play Golden State in the first round, there's no way I believe they beat Golden State. No way, no how. And, like, the East, man, you probably got Milwaukee's damn near sure bet, Philly, Boston. I mean, any one of those, if you want to bet on any one of those three teams and say that's a sure bet, I don't think there's, there's any chance that any other team but Milwaukee, Philly, and Boston comes out the east but well with the west it's like i mean you could if the lakers was to make the playoffs they was to make the playoffs and you want to bet on them and they they came out the west with like a healthy lebron a healthy anthony davis and austin reeves playing still like he is and you know malik beasley and vanderbilt and uh, D'Angelo Russell, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't put my money on them, but I wouldn't be shocked at all. And do I see any NBA news that's significant right now? I mean, it said LeBron might return before the end of the season. I mean, we're right there at the end of the season. It's almost over. It's almost over. And, um, yeah, you know, I want to talk about that real quick. There's a lot of talk about trading Zion Williamson. And there's been some comparisons of the Joel Embiid situation. Joel Embiid didn't play his first two years. Look what Joel Embiid is now. I mean, he's been in the MVP race literally the last two or three seasons. Top three in the MVP race last two or three seasons. Um uh, Philadelphia 76ers are nowhere that they're, they're not where they are as a franchise without Joe Embiid. Uh people could try to say, oh, it was Joe Embiid and Ben Simmons at first, but it clearly shows that <laughs> where Ben Simmons's head is at, his career is at, and where Joe Embiid is at, it was clearly Joe Embiid was the driving force behind this. Um if I'm New Orleans, I'm a small market team. I'm thinking, let me, hold up. I'm thinking, what can I trade Zion Williamson for first? Like, what am I, am I trading to Washington for Bradley Bill? So Bradley Bill, CJ McCollum, and Brandon Ingram are supposed to get you to the championship. No way, no how. I'm not sold on it. Because of defense, uh, Bradley Bill hasn't proved that he's a winner. Um, like, I don't really see a lot of options. I mean, what are we trading Zion for? We're trading him for Julius Randle. So Julius Randle 
and CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram was supposed to get us to the NBA Finals. <laughs> no way, no how. Uh, are we trading for Car Anthony Towns? Car Anthony Towns, Brandon Ingram, and CJ McCollum. Is that getting you to the NBA Finals? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Once again, defense. Defense. Um, and Zion Williamson is like the most efficient superstar we've probably ever seen it ever. Uh, let's see. Dallas. Are we trading him for – and I think Kyrie Irving's probably a free agent. So it would have to be a sign-and-trade deal. Are we trading Kyrie Irving to Dallas for – Kyrie Irving, because C.J. McCollum, Kyrie Irving, and Brandon Ingram get us to the NBA Finals. That's a lot of scoring, but I'm going to say no. Once again, defense. Who are they going to lock down? Who are they going to lock down when it comes time? Um, let's see. I just don't see a lot of places that – because if I'm New Orleans and I'm trading away a superstar talent like Zion who's putting up 25 or more nine rebounds, however many assists, blocks, steals, and on the most efficient manner in the, in the NBA, I mean, who am I trading? Trading them Chicago for... Zach Levine or DeMar DeRozan, that doesn't get you to the NBA Finals. Am I trading them to Atlanta? I'm going to tell you what now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Atlanta would trade John Collins for Zion Williamson in a heartbeat. And I find Atlanta, I take that. <laughs> John Collins, and I give you John Collins and – um, uh, fucking DeAndre Hunter or something, man, for Zion Williamson. So I, I have Zion Williamson, Trey Young, Dejounte Murray, uh, Boban, Bojan, uh, Boban Bogdanovich. Uh, like, oh my gosh, Zion, Trey Young, Dejounte Murray, Clint Capella, and whoever else they got. Um. Yeah, man. Atlanta would be – there's not a lot of places that you could trade Zion for. Because if I'm New Orleans, I want a star player back. And I don't want Bradley Bill. I don't want John Collins. I don't want Zach Levine. I don't want Julius Randle. Not for Zion Williamson. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with Antonio Daniels on this. You gotta, you gotta just play it out, man. You gotta play it out. You gotta, you gotta just bet on Zion is going to figure it out. Cause Zion, a healthy Zion, the Pelicans were like number two and number number one and two in the West before Zion gets hurt. Before Zion gets hurt, and that's without Brandon Ingram. <laughs> without Brandon Ingram. So, and that's the thing. When you're a small market team, the only way you're going to win a championship is to draft like Golden State. Golden State was a small market team before they drafted Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green. They were a small market team because they weren't even a bigger market team than the Clippers. They weren't. No, not at the time because Clippers were L.A. You see how big of a market team Clippers are. They've made the Clippers now. You know, um, I would. I mean, Golden State was not that big of a market. And I would, I would argue most of the teams in the West aren't that big of a market. Dallas is not a big basketball market. Denver is not a big market. Phoenix is not really a big market. Sacramento is not a big market. Memphis is not really a big market. A lot of small markets in the NBA period, though. Milwaukee is a small market. Cleveland is a small market. Knicks are a big market, but nobody even wants to go play there. 
Philadelphia is a big market, but everybody ain't running to go sign at Philadelphia. Miami is a big market now. Boston's a big market. Um, Chicago's a big market, but everybody ain't going there. Brooklyn's a big market because it's in New York. Um, Atlanta's a big market, but nobody's running there. That's the thing. Like, there's only like a, a few teams that superstar players are really just thinking about going playing for when they leave their teams. San Antonio, small market, Portland, Utah, OKC, small market. Man, there's a lot of the NBA is comprised of small market teams in eight. So they have to draft because nobody's leaving a small market and going to a smaller market. They're always usually going to bigger markets for the money. I mean, you got Boston, Philly, New York, Miami, Atlanta, Chicago. That's the only big market teams in the East. The rest are small markets. Charlotte Hornets, there's no way, no how we're going to be able to trade for a player and, and win a championship. We could trade away a player and prevent us from having a chance to win a championship. Like when we trade away Kobe Bryant, that's where we screwed up. We traded away Kobe Bryant. <laughs> that was the worst mistake we ever made is Charlotte Hornets traded away Kobe Bean Bryant. And I probably would have loved Kobe as a player if he played for Charlotte. <laughs> if he played for Charlotte. But the thing is, is Kobe would have left. Kobe would have left because they wouldn't have put enough around him. And he definitely wasn't trying to play. Like, when we went from Charlotte to New Orleans, he probably would have been like, nah. And because even though we wasn't, like, once they took the Hornets from Charlotte to New Orleans, we didn't, we wasn't Hornet fans. We wasn't New Orleans Hornet fans. Get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> this is North Carolina, man. You know, so, yeah. If I'm New Orleans Pelicans, I don't trade Zion. You're not going to be able to get a number one pick like that again, probably draft a player like that, a generation. I mean, he is a generational talent when he's healthy. When he's healthy, and you just got to bank on that he's going to figure it out, man. Because if not, then you're going to have to trade him for a bunch of pieces. A bunch of pieces. And, and if you go trade him, you're going to have to trade him for a, a veteran shooter and a veteran defensive player. Because that's the only way you're going to win with a Brandon Ingram, C.J. McCollum. You know, and I do like Valachunas. I do, I do like Valachunas. He's actually been doing. He puts up. He could put up bigger offensive numbers than Stephen Adams. But Stephen Adams is great for Memphis, though, too. He's been great for Memphis. I think they both teams got what they needed. You know, because Memphis had Valachunas, and they traded Stephen Adams for Valachunas. But for New Orleans, I mean, when he put up twenty points and nineteen rebounds. You get you you're definitely earning your money, you know. So yeah, and um, I don't see nothing in the NBA worth. I mean, the NFL really worth talking about. And maybe tomorrow I'll probably go over what teams I think uh, win each division. Uh, once again, thank you for tuning in, Paul Pickett Podcast, and I'm out.